He's an excellent poet. He's a great bloke. He's probably best known for uh, being in, uh, he's in uh, Boardwalk Empire. He's one of the guys that works for Al Capone, which is kind of cool. Um, so I'm just going to try and ring it, and uh, <laughs> we'll see what happens, I suppose. If you've got faith, have it in yeah. me. Yeah. States and I know it's evening there, so hope you're having a good old beatific time. Yeah! The party started here. I see. Good I good. hear. <laughs> what are you for ten minutes, Frank? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Frank Messina. Yeah! Please turn your phones off. <laughs> so. I wish I was there, you know, I've been to the UK uh, several times, and the last time I was there, I did the London International Poetry and Song Festival uh, that was hosted by Richard Deacon, the playwright. And I was there along with David Amram, a good friend, and uh, the legend, as you know. And we did a performance there at the Marquis Theater, and then I ventured up north, the northeast, to, uh, Newcastle. I had a wonderful time up there. Met there with folks like Keith Armstrong. Yeah. Over there, we did uh, poetry and music, and they taught me something, and I taught them a few things. <laughs> and I made good friends there. So I hope to come there again. I wish I was there this time. I was with Dave Amram on Monday night at the Cornelia Street Cafe in Ranch Village, and we David has an event there every month, and I was uh, honored to be part of that show Monday night, and I read uh, uh, my poetry, and my actor friend John Ventimiglia was there, and others really had a fantastic time. And so, you know, being a, a, a people sometimes refer to me as, a, as the Mets poet, baseball poet, or the American poet, I just, I just look at, like many writers there tonight, uh, which is poetry of poets. Uh, what we're doing is, as writers, are um, taking information that's going on in our current time, in our world. There's a lot of things happening in the world, as you know. Not all of it's good, but not all of it's bad. But I think what a, what a writer does, what a, what, a, what a good writer does, is document what's happening and what's not happening, you see, in between the lines. and encapsulated onto paper and a computer or whatnot and share it with the world because let's face it what happened 50 years ago and 60 years ago and 150 years ago and a thousand years ago and going back to biblical times <coughs> what do we have what do we have we have the writing first and foremost in the ark that tells the story the history the her story the story and, and I think as poets, you know, we're his, historians, whether we know it or not, we like it or not. And, uh, and that part of the fun that I have as a writer, as a poet, is reading to people all around the United States and around the world. Um, and not only sharing my work, but also listening and hearing what's on the minds of people all, all around the world. It makes for a better world when we listen to each other. So, the poets are key to that. Directions to the soul of America. I am clocked at 100 miles per hour, somewhere between Lubeck, Maine, Key West, Florida, Cape Alaba, Washington, in the great race to discover the soul of America. Somewhere between the rhythm strips of the desert highway, I dodge jackrabbits to get caught beneath the undercarriage of a Pontiac GTO. Somewhere between her thighs and the muscular horizon, I can taste the soul, the soul of America. Searching, 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 searching for the soul, searching for the soul of America. 
Somewhere between gigs, paintings, and casino jaunts, and ball games, Turkish cafe late night chats with Amram, I find time for Dina who's crying in the night and she's looking for a way out. And I told her, the only way out is to jump right in. So she jumps right in and she says, I've discovered the soul of America. Searching, searching, searching for the soul, searching for the soul. And I hear an aha moment from above between the Hudson and the Ohio. Whitman captures hummingbirds and Whitehead sets them free. It's that moment when the bearded bards look directly at the sun and through the redness of their eyes they shout, I have discovered the soul of America. Searching, 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 searching for the soul, searching for the soul of America. I'm reading on the road for the third, fourth, or fifth time and tugs at my heart and grabs the keys, hit the highway once again, the story of my life. Wandering, touring, searching, searching, searching for the soul. Searching for the soul of America. Searching for the soul of the world. Searching for the soul. Searching, searching for the soul of the world. Thank you. That's the house where Jack lived in 1958 when he wrote the final edits to On the Road and composed the Dharma Buns right there on his typewriter uh, in a little small bungalow. He lived there with his mother and he became famous in that house. And the house fell to disrepair for many years and a few kind folks uh, put resources together to rebuild the house or fix it up. It's still the original, it's original estate although it's fixed up now. So what we do, I came on board there since 2008 as a volunteer, it's all volunteer. And it's a writer's residency. So every three months, a new writer comes in, lives in the house by himself or herself to write. Free room and board. And they also get uh, a food stipend to purchase uh, groceries. And they get there, they write, and we've had over 50 writers there. It's completely free, and it's something I'm proud of. And David Amram is uh, part of the, uh, uh, he's one of the creative advisors, just like myself. We're hosting a show in New York City on October 30th at the legendary Joe's Pub, just at the Public Theater in New York City. And we'll have actor friends like Mike Shannon and Lee Ronaldo from Sonic Youth and myself and David Amram, and we're gonna be performing works by Kerouac with Amram's quintet. And if any writers would like to uh, submit their work or to apply apply for the residency, you can go to kerouacproject.org and you'll see all the information there. And I hope that some of you writers uh, do take advantage of that because it's, it's one of the greatest uh, um, writers' residencies that I've come across uh, in America and the world. And I know there's plenty out there, but this is very unique because you have the house for yourself for three months in Florida. Yeah. So, just wanted to yeah. pitch that out. Yeah. I, uh, this Friday is uh, anniversary, the 14th anniversary of September 11th here in New York. And I've been honored uh, each year, most every year when I can make it, to ask uh, to read a poem or two at the memorial. Um, I've read it in Jersey City, in New York, and all around the country, really, but uh, back here in, in, in the great, great uh, metropolitan area in New York City, um, we are, uh, you know, remembering uh, my neighbor, uh, neighbors, um, and not only the, the tragedy of what happened, but also um, the healing process that's taken over the years. But this particular poem I wrote, David and I recorded it.
together. But I wrote this piece back in 2001, and it's now in the, uh, along with my original manuscript of my 9 11 related poems, are now in the uh, museum of uh, the 9 11 Museum and Memorial. And for me personally, it's better than winning any award. Um, it's there, like I said earlier, the history will be put in the, uh, um, so 100 years from now, someone could go look at not only my writing, but the many others and the artworks that are there and the commemorations. Bicycle for Juan Gutierrez, delivery boy. Against the lamppost at Cedar and Greenwich, it stands dusted, war torn, chained to the moment of its own seized labor, awaiting the return of Juan Gutierrez from a morning delivery at One World Trade. Now a shrine it stands, decorated with flowers, flags, Spanish prayers, its wiry basket tied with paper ribbons, its gray skeletal frame encircled with melted candle wax, folded letters of farewell, crayon drawn with teardrops. On the edge of ground zero it stands, a testament of one life, one story, of a hard-working young man struggling, moving forward to a place where bicycles lead to dreams of better days ahead. Better days ahead. Better days ahead. Thank you. Thank you.